All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something just a little bit different. I'm gonna be challenging myself to solve as many lead code easy problems as I can in only 10 minutes. I'm also gonna be putting a restriction that I'm not allowed to use any of my template code for code forces. And even if I need to code like a segment tree for some reason, which I probably won't, but if I do need to do that, then I'll have to write that from scratch. So let's just see how this goes. As you can see, I already have a bunch of lead code easy problems already pulled up. I also have my phone, which is on a 10 minute timer. And the moment I hit start is when I get to start reading a problem. So I'll just start with plus one and the timer starts in three, two, one, go. Given a large integer representing an integer right digits where each digit is a i-th digit, digits of award were most at least significant. Increment the large array by one to return the resulting array of digits. Okay, so we're just given an array of digits and we have to kind of add one to this number. So, the number of digits themselves will only increase if all of them are nine. So, I wanted to find n as how many digits there are, basically the length of the array. Um, I'm gonna handle the special case where um, if all of the digits are nine, so all nine and equal to x equal to nine. And if they're all nine, then I'm gonna have to define a new array that is one length larger and set the largest digit to one. Then I can just return that. Otherwise, adding one to this array will not increase the number of digits. So in that case, we can just do that. Um, so we increase the ones place by one, um, and then we want to handle carryovers properly. So while um, the current place does not equal to 10, what we want to do is we want to set this to be equal to zero, and then increment the next largest place. should all be digits, my bad. But it should be an easy fix. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Um, we have an index out of bounds over here for, okay. Oh, if while it equals to 10, my bad. All right, let's go ahead and submit and see if it works. All right, surface AC. Moving on to the next problem. Given an integer array nums and integer val, remove all occurrences of val of nums in place. Then return number of elements in num which are not equal to val. The order of elements may be changed. Okay. So we have to delete all occurrences of val in place, but we don't necessarily have to maintain the order. So my first instinct is to think about um, if we can, we can first iterate through this array to figure out how many occurrences of val there are, and then we can just swap them out. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we want to count how many occurrences um, of the value are in this array. So if x is equal to val, count increase by one. And this gives us an idea of like when we can swap elements back and forth. And this has to be in place. But based on how the length of the array is only 100, this doesn't mean we have to do it in O of N for it to pass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and handle that. Um, so for all occurrences that are within um, N minus count, so in other words, N minus count are the set of indices where um, the value val should not occur in that prefix. 
So I can go ahead and handle that by iterating over these um, and then keeping an index starting at n minus count. And these are the indices where they should all be equal to um, value. So let's go ahead and, oh, and also we return n minus count because we want to return how many of the elements are not equal to val. So in this case, if um, we want to update dex, so while nums at dex is equal to val, then we want to increase this by one. And also, obviously, we want to make sure it doesn't go out of bounds. And so dex is going to be equal to a certain possible thing. And if um, nums at i is equal to val, then we want to swap. So we swap first by doing, we set a temp variable. So we do nums at dex, nums at dex is equal to nums at i, and then nums at i is equal to temp. And then we also increase dex by one. Right, and let's go ahead and submit this. And because we're using a two pointers method, this runs an O event anyway, so that's good. All right, the next problem is remove duplicates from a sorted array. Given an integer array num sorted in non decreasing order, remove the duplicates in place such that each element appears only once. Okay, so it's a similar premise except we're just removing duplicates. And we also output is that how many distinct? Yeah, okay, we also output how many unique elements there are. So let's see. The way we can do this in place is we can just update a prefix as we go. So we set a current variable as, so if we set first n as just the length of the array to make implementation easy, easier, um, we can set this as an index. So we start at i equals one because we can always keep nums as like the first value since that would be fine. Okay, the relative order should stay the same, but the array is also given in non-decreasing order, which means that all elements of the same value are gonna be in one group. So this allows us to check um, the boundaries of each group. So we know that we encounter a new element if array at i minus one does not equal to array at i. And in this case, we want to update our prefix. So cur is going to be equal to um, one at first because that's just the first value in the array. And then the way that we update this is we want to update um, array at cur because this is a new value with array at i. And then cur increases by one because we want to move an index forward. And cur should actually just be equal to how many distinct elements there are. So we can just return the pointer directly. <clears throat> oh, it's called nums, not array. All right. Nums. Okay, it passed the samples. And let's see if it passes. All right, we AC'd. Used a little bit of memory for some reason, but the problem passed, so we're good to go. <clears throat> All right, we write a function to find the longest common prefix among an array of strings. Okay, well, all the constraints are small, and this is also a leak code easy problem, so we don't need to use a try to implement this. We can just do a simple brute force. So in other words, uh, we can use a first string in the array as almost a template string, where we can use that string to generate the prefixes that we want to compare. <clears throat> so for int i is equal to zero, i is less than the length of the string. Okay, int or the string prefix that we want to compare it with is just a prefix. So we do substring of zero to i plus one. 
and then we want to compare it with all the other strings. So for string s in strings, um, this is going to be bully. So I want to set a variable called match <coughs> to be equal to true if it matches. So if the length of a string that we're comparing it is strictly less than i, or, or I guess i plus one, yeah. If it's strictly less than i plus one or um, s dot substring zero to i plus one does not equal to um, the prefix that we're comparing it to, then mac is going to be equal to false. <clears throat> and then if, ah, oh, that's the time. All right, I think I needed just another minute for this. But if, <clears throat> but basically, okay, I can store a prev variable and I can set prev to prefix. Um, and then if this is not a match, then that's a, the previous thing that we found is the longest common prefix. Let's go ahead and run this. Um, string, oh, so it's a variable name. Okay. There, pass the samples. And we got an AC. All right, so as you can see, I was able to solve three problems in under 10 minutes, and I was able to get the fourth problem in just past the 10 minute mark. Um, if you guys want solutions, then just let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.